It's often said that racing enhances the breed, and for many cars, success on the track boosts their appeal in the showroom. But what about the cars whose original designs didn't prioritize performance? Surely, they deserve a chance to have some fun, too. Here's our compilation of the weirdest and most fascinating racing cars. And if you do enjoy this video, please remember to give it a like and subscribe for more from Zillionaire's Toys. In the late 1960s, a German company named Offrecht Melcher Gros Aspatch, or AMG, set out with an ambitious goal to transform the large and heavy Mercedes-Benz 300 SEL into a race car capable of outperforming more agile competitors, like the Alfa Romeo GTA and the Ford Capri on the track. Initially, the idea seemed absurd, but AMG's engineering brilliance turned the 6.3-liter M100 V8 engine from the dictator-friendly 600 limousine into a 450-horsepower 6.8-liter powerhouse. And thoughtful upgrades to the suspension and brakes significantly improved handling. Nicknamed the Red Pig, the modified 300 SEL competed in the 1971 24 Hours of Spa. Despite frequent pit stops due to its high fuel consumption and rapid tire wear caused by its substantial weight, it achieved an impressive second place finishing behind a Ford Capri. Today, Mercedes-AMG's larger models such as the S65 and the GL63 owe their existence to the pioneering Red Pig. Nick named the world's fastest Prius. The GT300 was built to compete in Japan's Super GT series against formidable opponents such as the Audi R8, BMW Z4, Lamborghini Gallardo, and Porsche 911. This may seem ambitious, but the GT300 is no ordinary Prius. Its power comes from a 295-horsepower gasoline-electric hybrid drivetrain, which includes a detuned 3.4-liter V8 engine from Toyota's LMP1 program and the original hybrid synergy drive unit of the Prius, a lithium-ion battery pack which helps lower the car's center of gravity, stores the electricity. The Tyrrell P34, or Project 34, widely known as the Six-Wheeler, a Formula One race car crafted by Derek Gardner, Tyrrell's chief designer, it featured four specially made 10-inch wheels and tires at the front and two standard-sized wheels at the rear. Alongside the Brabham BT for 6B fan car from 1978, the six-wheeled Tyrrell was among the most radical and successful F1 entries, often hailed as the most recognizable design in motorsport history. Debuting in September 1975, the P-34 began competing in the 1976 season, achieving success and prompting other teams to explore six-wheeled designs. However, modifications for the 1977 season rendered it less competitive, leading to its abandonment for Tyrrell's 1978 season. Other six-wheeled projects also ceased, and F1 rules later mandated cars to have only for wheels. While these cars found some success in classics races, they are now primarily museum exhibits. When you were a kid doodling in your notebook, what was your first idea for designing a fast, cool car? You probably thought of making it more like an airplane, right? If so, you were thinking along the same lines as Dean Wilson, the founder of Eagle Aircraft Company. He aimed to create an indie car inspired by his favorite aviation projects. 
This vision led to the 1980 to Flyer Special, also known as the Crop Duster. This vehicle broke all the conventional norms of Indy cars by placing the driver at the front instead of the back, adding fins and wings, and using a construction of balsa wood, aluminum, and steel tubes. While the Flyer Special might have been a great airplane as a car, it couldn't compete with vehicles designed specifically for the racetrack. It failed to qualify for the Indy 500, and the design was ultimately abandoned. The 2J was the final iteration of Chaparral's successful to race cars. It featured a snowmobile engine that powered a pair of fans, which created downforce by sucking air from underneath the car without increasing drag. A 7.6-liter engine producing approximately 680 horsepower compensated for the additional weight of this complex setup. Dubbed the Sucker Car, the 2J required extensive fine-tuning to function as intended. During the 1970 season, race authorities received numerous complaints about the vehicle and ultimately banned it, citing its use of a movable aerodynamic device. NASCAR is often seen as the quintessential American racing series, but in the 1950s, European manufacturers frequently participated. In 1958, a pair of Citroen ID-19s, driven by Los Angeles-based racers Bill Jones and Ralph Roberts, secured first and second place in their class at the 500-mile Riverside race. A recently unearthed article from a period issue of Motor Racing featured by Auto Week reveals that these two ID-19s were equipped with an unmodified 70-horsepower, 1.9-liter four-cylinder engine and remained entirely stock except for the addition of seatbelts and a roll cage. This engine allowed them to reach a top speed of 101 miles per hour and maintain an average fuel efficiency of 19.3 mpg throughout the race. Although they finished first in their class, the ID-19s did not win the overall race, placing 18th and 19th respectively. Spanish driver Jose Luis Alvarez ambitiously planned to compete in the 2013 Dakar Rally. With a heavily modified first-generation Smart for Two, this tiny racer shared almost no components with the stock for two commonly seen on European streets. The Smart's chassis was sourced from the ATV-like Polaris XP900, a modification that greatly increased its ground clearance. It was powered by a Polaris-sourced 900cc two-cylinder engine producing 90 horsepower. While that may not sound like much, it was impressive for a car weighing only 1,650 pounds. Unfortunately, the team had to cancel their Dakar entry due to insufficient funding from sponsors. Who says you can't have fun with a French family van? In 1995, Kronos Racing transformed the well-mannered Peugeot 806 Eurovan into a no-compromise pro car for the 24 hours of Spa Fran Corps champs. The rest is history. 29 years ago, the head of Peugeot's advertising budget had a wild idea for the 1995 24 hours of Spa Franker champs. Peugeot decided to go all out and build a pro car from the family-sized 806 MPV. Under the care of Kronos Racing, the car was stripped down and prepped for racing. Its engine a combination of parts from the 306 Maxi Rally car and the 406 Super Tourism. Once completed, the engine boasted an impressive 280 horsepower, making it a serious contender on the track. After passing scrutineering, it was time to race. Eligible for the class to super touring category, the 806 was set to compete against some of the best touring cars of the era. 
Unfortunately, technical issues on race day prevented the car from completing the full 24 hours. The story of the rally-prepared 1981 Rolls-Royce Cornish Coupe perfectly embodies the adventurous spirit of the early Paris-Dakar rallies. These races were open to anyone with more money than cents, where professionals led the pack. But to Frenchmen in a Rolls-Royce Cornish, one coupe could still navigate the desert mid-pack, taking their chances. This particular Cornish originated from a dinner bet that a Rolls could be converted for desert racing. Perita Montcorgi, a rally driver and builder of Myers Manx replicas in France, reportedly secured funding from designer and perfumer Christian Dior for the project. Dior's new men's cologne, Jules, was emblazoned on the side and a significant transformation began. The car was outfitted with lightweight aluminum and composite body panels, a custom tubular chassis, a four-wheel drive system from a Toyota Land Cruiser, and a 350-horsepower Chevrolet small-block engine replaced the original V8. An 87-gallon fuel tank ensured they wouldn't run dry between stages. The rally rolls performed admirably, holding 13th place for much of the 1981 race. And despite being disqualified due to a broken steering axle and lengthy repair, it was one of only a third of the entrants to reach Dakar intact. After the race, the car went into storage, but for an additional fee, one of the creators offers to help restore it to modern specifications. With a design reminiscent of a Batman movie, the Delta Wing is a marvel of engineering. It forgoes conventional aerodynamic features like spoilers, instead using two tunnels beneath the car to generate downforce. The Delta Wing made its track debut at the 2012 24 Hours of Le Mans, taking the 56th garage reserved for experimental race cars. The race started well for the unique vehicle, but it retired after colliding with a concrete barrier on the 75th lap. Up until 2016, an evolved version of the Deltaing powered by a turbocharged 1.9-liter four-cylinder engine producing about 350 horsepower, continued to compete in endurance events. After the 2016 season, it wouldn't be possible anymore to race with the Delta Wing due to changed regulations, and in November of the same year, it was confirmed that the Delta Wing wouldn't race in the 2017 Rolex 24. That's part one of our mini-series of the weirdest, most fascinating racing cars of all time. Subscribe and hit that notification button to watch part two or other mini-series only herein.